Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at Lions Hall, Canisius College, Buffalo, New York. It is the 7th of May, 2008, approximately 10.30 a.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, your date of birth, and place of birth, please? Stuart Charles Watson, September 17, 1922, Proxy Saskatchewan, Canada. Okay. Um, when did your family move to the United States? I'm going to say around uh, 1922. When I was around uh, six years old, uh, at the, that would be 28. Okay. Um, where did you? What was your educational background prior to going into service? I had uh, high school, and that's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, you went to Riverside High School. Right. So, did you live? You lived in the Black Rock area then. Right. Okay. Um, do you remember where you were when you heard about Pearl Harbor? Yeah, I uh, we were sitting around the table at dinner, my family and I, in Buffalo, and uh, we heard about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was on the radio. Yes, yeah, on the radio. Do you remember remember your reaction or the reaction of your family? Well, it didn't it didn't react so much to me at the time. I was pretty young at the time. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I, uh, I remember it was a very sh it was a shock. Of mm -hmm. course. Do you even know where Pearl Harbor was? No. Most people didn't. Yeah. Um, were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Now I was a I was a uh, Canadian citizen. Mm -hmm. Oh, they you drafted still kept me anyhow. Your, you kept your citizenship. No, they drafted well, me, and then, then they took it away from me in the service. Oh, really? But I have a alien registration card here, right? When I had that register as an alien during the war, they made everybody register, and they just drafted us anyhow. Mm -hmm. Which they weren't legally entitled to do, but they did it anyhow, and I didn't know the difference. I was young enough to mm -hmm. not go. I was only 19, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how I got in the service, by drafting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were drafted into the Army. Uh, where did you go for your basic training? Camp Hood, Texas, the tank destroyer school. How long was that basic training, do you recall? About a year, year and a half, year and mm -hmm. a quarter. How was it, what specific training did you get in a tank destroyer well, school? A, 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 tank is, a tank destroyer is mobile artillery. It's, it's bigger than the Sherman tank. It has a 90 millimeter gun on it, where the Shermans only had 40 millimeters. And it was just bigger and better and faster. Mm -hmm. And we had hydraulic controls that we could swing that elevation and, and traverse hydraulically. So the Germans didn't have that. They had to, they, even the, the, the uh, Tiger tanks had to be done by hand. Mm -hmm. And that's where we were, we were able to beat them to beat them with the punch. But our Shermans were no match for the German Tigers mm -hmm. at all. They just, they just shot them to their run out of bullets. Yeah, they were a medium yeah. tank. Well, it's all right. It did its job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, now, what were, was your specific job on a, a tank that's Well, there's five, five jobs in the tank and you rotate. There's a, mm -hmm. the gunner, the, this one guy stands up, there's no, no tap on a tank right. destroyer. One guy stands up and he's the gun commander and then you have a driver and there's just a driver and a clearer and a loader. But there's five men. So you rotated your Yeah, you your rotated job. Every, yeah. And he, every two hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know them all. All right. Um, how did you uh, get along with the others? Were you always in the same crew? Yes, but basically mm -hmm. during the during the training period, mm -hmm. that wasn't the case in combat. Mm -hmm. Did you keep the same vehicle most of the time? Or? Until I got shot off from India, yeah. Uh -huh. Now, There's something um, wrong with it. We always have mechanical problems and get changed changed machines. Mm -hmm. Did you have to do anything with the mechanical mechanics of the, no, we the vehicle at they all? Had, they had guys come in and do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what was life like on base for you? Um, was this your first time away from home? Yes, it was. And uh, I was there. I was away six months. And uh, Irene and I decided to get married in spite of all our advice to the contrary. So we got married and uh, she came down and lived in Texas for about six months. Mm -hmm. Now, and where where did you live on on base? Did you have housing for well, both had, of you? Or? They had a camp. They, we had special housing for us in the area. 
cemetery housing that she could stay as long as she worked at the camp. Uh, in the office there. Thank, thank you, camp, camp office, she had special rights for privileges. And so, but I had to stay in the base. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how did you, yourself, how did you like having to live there in, in this? It was fine, except that uh, when you come out of the, uh, they were barracks type building and they divided them up into about four, four apartments. And when you come outside, there was a lot of space and there were all German soldiers there, right across the street from us. Oh, there were no, POWs? Yeah, right, POWs. no fence. Everybody's walking free. And then the other thing is when you went in the bathroom in this apartment, you turn the light on and all the roaches would come running out. How were, did you get along well with the other women? They worked together? With yes, I worked for the post engineer's office and uh, everybody was, I think I worked for a major nunley and everybody was great. Mm -hmm. Now, when he transferred from Hood, where did you go? Well, he, he was going to go to Laurel, Maryland. So I rush up there and uh, wait, but I never heard from him again. He just, they didn't tell Good. anybody Good. anything. Oh, and he was already on his way to Europe, and I'm still waiting in Laurel, Maryland. And the government never told you? No. So where did you, where did you go back? I went Buffalo? back home. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, after you... you Left Hood, where did you go? Well, I, they decided after I was in Hood a year training, and they had my MOS, which tells you what your background mm -hmm. is, and they had typing and shorthand, and, and I had a, I had a, a pretty good IG, AGC score. So they decided to send me to infantry, kind of candidate school, to officer candidate school in uh, Fort Benning. And so we went there for 17 weeks in a terrible, tough course. And in the last seven, two days before the end of the seven-week course, they uh, told us to go into the town and get your uniform. You're going to be officers. And then one day later, they canceled it and said, "No, we don't. We need you more as, as field troops than we do officers. You're going right overseas." Huh. So they stuck on the Queen, on the Queen Elizabeth. And so they canceled the program. No, and and the our program, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, that was the end of that. So. Uh, well, I couldn't tell her any of this stuff, so. And uh, so they put us in the Queen, Queen America, Queen Elizabeth, and shot us over in the worst ride I ever had in my life. I was seasick for a month after that trip. I even wrote my wife and told her I wasn't coming back. That's how bad it was. Mm -hmm. Even when I we got onto the land in France, every time I shut my eyes and go to sleep, I get seasick. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. They took the gyroscopes off of these big boats during the war, so that. Germans couldn't get them, and uh, they just, just like a cork in a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. So you went directly to France? No, we went to England first, and oh, then to okay. France. And uh, crossed the, uh, the uh, channel there, and we got over in the chan. Uh, and I remember marching up this hill to a great big, like an air dome building, and uh, we got in there, and there was Tommy Dorsey's band playing. Oh. So it was quite a thrill to us, you know. Mm -hmm. But then we went right into combat after that. Just now, when, when did you go to England? Do you know approximately what time of year? Or? I had all these records, and we had a flood three years ago when the trees were all damaged, and our oh, yes. basement was flooded that high, and everything mm -hmm. got wrong. Like, uh, my discharge papers, everything is gone. Mm, that's too bad. So uh, I can't remember exactly, but I would just say... Was it spring, fall? No, it was, it was, it was the early year. Mm -hmm. This would be of uh, 44? Yeah. Might, might, have been, might have been summer. Okay. Now, um, when you went across into France, where did you go? Uh, well, we were, we, were, uh, we were in a ripple depot. Okay. Replacement depot. When we, mm -hmm. I was, lost my rank down the corp, and they... Uh, so the Third Army called for us, the Third Fifth Division, and we just sort of went in as regular replacements. But when they saw I had tank destroyer training, they immediately shoved us within the tank destroyers. It, well, it's a little intense that training as compared to regular soldiers. Mm -hmm. So you were with the Third Army. Third Army, Thirty Fifth Division, and I was with them all the time of Patton's race across 
France until the, uh, the Rhine River crossing, at which time I was transferred to the Second Army, British Army under Montgomery. And we crossed the river under him, the difference in day and night under two generals. And then the, we got over there, and into the fighting again, the army we were transferred to General Simpson's Ninth Army. Mm -hmm. If I go back to something you just said, what was the difference between Patton and Montgomery? Oh, just the way he handled himself. He was a, he was a, he was a no nonsense guy. You know, Who, which one now? Patton. Patton. Yeah. Uh, well, did you prefer Patton over Montgomery, or? I didn't care <laughs> either until I got away from him. You know, Patton, I'm glad I got away from him. He was really the best guy we had. No question about it. No mm -hmm. question about it. Mm -hmm. He knew how to move troops. Just don't get in his way, that's all. You didn't, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I never actually saw him. This picture I have is taken by a friend of mine. And uh, that's, I, I always remember, I was at the places he had been mm -hmm. when he had just left. And he broke guys down from captain down to private. And he was really a raising heck. But he got a moving. Now, what did you think of Montgomery? He was all right. He was different his day and night, you know, and the way he ran it was a completely different type of operation. Mm -hmm. But I was only with him for maybe a month. And then they got transferred to Simpson for the, the ninth time after we crossed the Rhine, and it was just, just a shooting gallery after that. We had no real serious opposition anymore. Patton had really knocked the heck out of him. Right. Um, now, when you, as a replacement, um, you did you stay with the unit that you were eventually assigned no, to? No, no, no. We so each to time, a new outfit. so each time you moved from one army to the other, you no, no, that's not okay. true. I stayed with the 35th Division all the oh, time. Oh, so they stayed, but they were transferred to the 35th to the Montgomerys and to mm -hmm. Simpsons. Okay. All right. It was the same same outfit. Did you stay with the same crew at all? No, I had that special training on, so I went, I mean, the guys had shot up, we'd get a new crew, we had to train them all over again. We were constantly turning people over, training them mm -hmm. in tank destroyers. Mm -hmm. That was considered a, a pretty good skill to the generals, I guess. What kind of personal weapon did you carry? Well, I, <laughs> I uh, had a Luger pistol I got from some dead German. But uh, we had rifles, mm -hmm. but you couldn't—you didn't have a rifle in the tank. It's just out, out of the way. So it, it, the Thompson submachine guns is really what you have. Okay. Did each member of the crew carry a Thompson? Yeah, that's probably. Ooh. Probably. Did you carry the grease gun at all, too? Uh, no, I never did. Huh? I had one though, for a while. But the Thompson well, was pretty good gun, but it couldn't, couldn't compare with the Schneiser of the Germans. Oh, yeah. That was really a rip torn ring gun, but we couldn't get the ammunition for it. That's the mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty much a Thompson submachine deal because we get the bullets for that. How? Where did you live day to day um, on the move? Did you have uh, well, you tents lived, lived or in your buildings? Lived or? in your tank or under it. Mm -hmm. Or if, you were within, if it was in a quiet time, you could we'd back the tank to storage right into a house, and the roof would be over us. We let everything step full, and then we get out. Mm -hmm. So we. So you backed it right through the walls. Back just like a front front front. front. Back it right in, and you go, go into the basement. The waiter would take it in the basement, so you get about half of the building over the top of you. But that that was when things were slowed down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But when when it was going hot and heavy, you slept under the tank or in it. Mm -hmm. Now, how did you uh, obtain this Luger that you carried? <laughs> I got him a German dead. And once we, well, once uh, we got into a, in a further along towards uh, Berlin, we backed into a, a German munitions factory and there were cartons of Lugers. Hmm. So everybody had Lugers. We had them in but then the war was pretty much behind us for this mm -hmm. time. Now, did you bring that home or send that home at all? No, or? I had one I brought home and it got stolen from me. Hmm. How, where did you obtain the, the sword and the, the dagger? That was from a, a dead German officer. Want to show that to us now? When, when did you, when, about the dates that you obtained those? Oh, I would say that would be, uh, 
March of 45. Now he was wearing those I don't know if he was wearing the field, them, but he, had, he had them with he, him. He wasn't, he wasn't wearing them, but he had them with him. Mm -hmm. I actually got six of them, of each. You have them now? No, or, no, they're, you, I've given them away. And what happened to all those? They right? stole them at our cabin. They were stolen no. from it. But they're dress swords, they never used them. Right, right. It's my outfit and tank of swords. Mm -hmm. Now, did you ever have any problems of obtaining uh, fuel for your vehicles or uh, yeah, supplies? Yeah, one, one time with patents, he was having his problems, but he used to yell so much, he finally gave it to him. But he, he would have gone faster if he'd uh, give it, mm -hmm. give it to him, but the mm -hmm. fuel was a problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, with the, your unit, um, did you ever come up against the Tiger tank? Or oh, sure. Could you talk about some of the combat? Uh, <laughs> Well, it's pretty, pretty fast moving, you know. Mm -hmm. You either got a shot in at them or they got a shot in at you. But as I say, we had the hydraulic traverse and, uh, and uh, vertical movements of the gun. The, the, the gun is 90 millimeter. The gun is a big gun. Mm -hmm. And the Germans were only 88 millimeter. 88, yeah. So uh, we'd, uh, we'd either get them or they got us, you know. We have had them shot under us. I didn't, I didn't get to the point where they... Generally, if an 88 millimeter gun hits your tank, it'd start on fire. But we got him, We got shot in the tracks and in different places. And he didn't get out. Mm -hmm. Go back until you get another one. But like Patton kept things moving so fast, they were right behind you. But he, he couldn't have any excuse for not having a good tank. Mm -hmm. He was he was a hot got guy. To... How many of your tank destroyer destroyers that you were in personally were were damaged like that? Oh, I don't know. Wow. I, I I wouldn't have any. Did you ever come up against the enemy carrying those? Uh, Bazooka type weapons called a Panzerfaust? Yeah, sure, we saw them. Mm -hmm. what? The, the, the bazooka, that was their yeah. bazooka, yeah, yeah. So we saw them. We never got hit by one. Mm -hmm. But they would do a lot of damage to a Sherman. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now you mentioned one of the most amusing or inspirational things was listening to the BBC on your tank. Yeah. Well, but that Radio. didn't happen until after the war was over. Oh, okay. That was back after things behind. Mm -hmm. We were sitting, we were picked to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. Bobby, with the war in Europe, mm -hmm. I'm going to finish that first. Where, where did you end up at the end of the war? Outside of Berlin, at the Elm River. Mm -hmm. Did you meet the Russians oh, at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were wild characters. Mm -hmm. Jumping around, dancing, singing. And, you know, they were, they were nice people, I would mm -hmm. say. How about concentration camps? Where yeah, we we uh, we liberated one of them. It's called Gardelegen, G E R D E L E G E N. It was one of the three four hundred that exist. And uh, I would say there's about four hundred prisoners. It wasn't a large one, and they were most more dead than alive. We came up on them. What were your feelings when you came up on oh, these? Were you aware of their existence prior to this? Oh yeah. I was really shocked to see that going on. Now, um, when the war ended in Europe, uh, how did your unit celebrate? Well, we didn't celebrate it. We, we, we were, we, they shipped us back to Camp Lucky Strike in mm -hmm. France, and that's where I heard this note on, on the radio. We were just trimming up, getting our machines all ready to get shipped over to Japan. And uh, then I heard this announcement from the BBC that the A-bomb had gone off, and uh, for all intents and purposes, the war was over. How did you feel when you heard about oh, the atomic bomb? I, 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 I think it's the greatest thing that ever happened. That means I'd see Irene again, you know. Mm -hmm. How did you feel about the uh, death of President Roosevelt? Well, we were all shocked. Mm -hmm. Now you sometimes uh, you mentioned that you had an unusual duty having to serve at court martials. Well, yeah, I had I was able to take uh, shorthand and typing. Now that's not heard of now today, but that was a pretty good skill. And uh, when the officers would get wind of that in my MOS, they'd pull me in, and 
I'd have to take court martials and stuff and type up citations for badges and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really good at that. I was not really, I couldn't, in the fast, fast tracking of a, of a, of a question and answer in the courtroom, I would get lost. I couldn't go that fast. I really wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. So I, when I typed them up, it came out wrong. <laughs> so uh, I went to my colonel. I said, I, I'm not doing any good, colonel. I said, you better get somebody else to do this. And he said, no, you stay here for a while. We'll, we'll, we'll overlook that. Well, after a couple more times, he finally agreed. And <laughs> my career was over as a court reporter. Now, was there anyone that you served with that impressed you? Uh, was, I? was there anyone that you served with that impressed you more than others that, that you kind of looked up to, an officer or? I don't think so. Okay. Did you ever get to see any uh, USO shows or see any Besides celebrities? Tom, you said yeah. you saw Tommy Dorsey early on. Did you yeah. see any other shows? Yeah, once when I was in Camp Hood, uh, Bob Hope came down there with his troop, put on the show. And that was a great thrill for us because mm -hmm. I was a part-time musician, and I, could, I enjoyed that very much. What, what instrument? I played drums. Oh. Do you ever get to play them any time during the, during the war? No, I kept putting in for the band when I saw all this fighting going on. <laughs> I, I like to join the, join the band. And, and they never, Didn't work out, huh? And, and all that time, three years, they never, and then finally when it was all over, they said, you can go in the band. And I said, they're going to take the band and shove it. <laughs> Now, uh, when did you get back to the States? Did you, were you in the Army of Occupation at all? For about two months. Mm -hmm. Then we were shipped back to uh, Camp Breckenridge, Kentucky, where all they had me doing is typing citations for officers, you know, making up stuff. <laughs> so uh, I was so fed up with Army life at that time. My brother was, was pretty uh, well known in politics. I asked him if he could get me out of this mess. I mean, uh, I've done all I can do. And so he got a hold of some congressman. They got me out in December uh, 43? 45, 45 right. yeah. Okay. Now, um, after the war, did you make use of the GI Bill at all? Yeah, I went to uh, UB, Little Fillmore College. I was married by this time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went nights. Nice. Four or five years, or something like that. Yeah, a long time. But uh, I, I, uh, I didn't think much of the comments, so you might write that right off the whole business because the, uh, the instructors were they were just getting started, you know, after the war, and they didn't have proper uh, professors. Mm -hmm. And the courses that I took, just, I, I just, I just thought it was a waste of time, and I quit. What did you end up doing? Well, I went back to my old job, and they. They put me on the road selling, Acme Company, uh, selling road road construction materials, and uh, I did pretty good at that. And we I had some inventions that I came up with during this time, and uh, they uh, came out pretty good and very good for them. Mm -hmm. and we sold them to the highway builders and the road contractors, and it became a very successful business. And I was with them for 30 years. And I finally one day decided to quit and start my own business. And from then on, it was, uh, from then on, it was all this way. <laughs> you know, I was really working for myself instead of for someone else. Mm -hmm. so. Now, did you ever use the 5220 Club? I think I heard it, but I can't remember. It was uh, like when you came back home, it was an unemployment <coughs> insurance. You received $20 a week for 52 weeks. You went right back to work then. <clears throat> did you ever join any veterans organizations? Yeah, I joined the Lamb Post, and now I belong to the. What post do I belong to? I can't remember. It's um. It's one out there in Amherst. Uh, East Amherst. Can't think of it. But I don't go to the meetings very much. I just mm -hmm. belong to Amherst. Mm -hmm. They're Zurich? mostly mostly Zurich. drinking or drinking organizations, and I go drinking. <laughs> Zurich Post. Zurich, yeah, Zurich Post. Oh, okay. Did you uh, stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? Yeah, I stayed in contact with... Well, why don't you, why don't you tell us about the photographs and then you can... 
And that, now, well, this is me, General Patton. I'm standing in front of a cathedral in Leeds, Belgium. I'm on a one-day fast, and the buzz bombs are coming over. This is me on top of my tank destroyer, another shot. These three men are crewmen with me. And these are pictures of my marriage. Another good friend of mine in the service. Now, this fellow, General Patton, had a role that you, if anybody gets wounded, you throw him out of the tank. You throw him out and keep going, and we'll pick him up. And that's what happened to Ed Thornburg here. And he, he never was able to use his arm again. I went to see him after the war down at his farm. And, uh, oh, which one was he in the picture? The tallest one. Okay. And uh, his, his arm was totally useless. This, he's a great big man. His arm was totally useless in that shell. And uh, we went to see him on his farm, and uh, he was trying it for a while. We finally gave it up. And, uh, so he had a rule that if someone was wounded, you just toss oh, them out the side? Uh, yeah, you can't do anything with them. They can. See? It made sense, but it was kind of heartless hmm. to do to a guy. So that was it. Now, do you have your dog tags? Yeah. My, my, my number was 32739132. Did we in the service? No. I still good, remember that. Pretty huh? good number to remember. <laughs> I, I still remember mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a German Army field kitchen unit. Now, what, what was that for? Was it was a heater? Heater, yes, heater. Okay. Hmm. Now, how, how did you get that? Well, just picking them up in the field. Did you ever have to use it? No. <clears throat> it's good you had a tank destroyer. You had a lot of things with you, didn't you? <laughs> this is another heater that you had to bend it open and you light it. Ah. Okay. This is removed from a fellow who was dead. He didn't need it anymore. It was an armband. And one day I came across a plane from Bel, Bel Air Cobra, which was quite a nice fighter plane, and yeah. it was crashed in a place in Germany. And all oh, about a block away, we found his harness, or his uh, air, his, uh, what do you call it? Airship. Airship. That was part of his, um, his umbrella for coming down. You know? oh. mm -hmm. I never, never did see the guy or anything. This is a story of my life in the service, if I can leave to you, for you, oh, yes, and also okay. what happened afterwards. Okay, can, we'll can I your folder. see that? Do you want to hold that up so I'll get a shot of the cover? That was prepared by my two daughters over there, Wendy and Judy. Okay. Okay, thank you. And you have your uniform with you. Yeah. Oh. Could you hold your uh, jacket up and uh, we can focus on that? You don't mind? Now, do you want to explain those uh, patches, like the patch on the left shoulder? I haven't seen that one before. Oh, you're the round patch on this side. Over, over your, your sergeant. What the, is that? That's the 35th infantry division. Can, can you turn that they sideways call it a little? That's the wagon wheel with Harry Truman's all up there. That's the division patch. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't know what these are anymore. I, I used to know. Let's see. The kind of metal. Yep. Uh, marksman badge. Uh, overseas in uh, World War Two, that's all your, your campaigns with the stars? Yeah. This is the ruptured duck that they gave everybody when they get out. Okay. And that's the tank destroyer patch? The tank destroyer patch. Okay. How do you think your time in the service had an effect on your life? Well, it was a big chunk of my life. Three years is a long time. Well, that's the reason I didn't go to college, because I was busy doing something else. Mm -hmm. Then when I got out and got ch got a child, I, I just didn't ever go back again. You, ever, you never were wounded. I, <laughs> I, I got a piece of steel in my face. I'd been there. I pulled it out and treated it. 
And the, my guys in my outfit said, you should run for a Purple Heart. I said, no, I don't want to disgrace that great organization. Because I wish it wasn't the battle. Mm -hmm. well, how did you get this? You got it in combat, though, didn't you? Yeah, I suppose. But I, mean, it wasn't, well, I wasn't really wounded, like an arm or leg. Or, mm -hmm. It isn't enough for me to want to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. Did you get sick at all any time while you were in service? Not after I got over my seasickness. Okay. I was really seasick. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I never was going to go to I'm real happy when they get off. <laughs> never went on the Crystal Beach boat then, huh? Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> but, uh, what's, what's the name of that band player, Irene? Vince Ryan. What? Vince Ryan. Oh, no, no, Vince Ryan. Chris the Beast Boat had a band on it. Yeah. A very good band. I, I used to sit there and watch them. I don't know, I could have been playing drums. Uh, were there any other incidences you want to relate before we turn the camera off? No. The I story can't. about the man who, who were hiding, went to hide, and all the officers were in the basement, and you went upstairs with oh, well, that's, your friend? We, we were in combat. And you get into uh, uh, very scary situations, you know. And so uh, at night, everything stops down pretty much in combat. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they, they only feed you two meals a day. That's a shock for a guy like me. <laughs> early morning, early night. And uh, so I, uh, we would get, the officers would take the basements because of the shelling. And I listed men to get on the upstairs floor. So, so, uh, and there was one young man who I knew. I, I traveled all through the boat rides and got to know him real well. I never got to know his name. I knew I didn't know it, but I'd forgotten it. And he, we both got up in this bedroom, and uh, there was, you know, all kinds of stuff on the windows and blackouts. And uh, he went over and looked out, peeked out, and he took a shell, took his head right off. Mm. And it really shocked me, the, the guy. I didn't know him that well. I thought I was not, you could make, make fast friends in the combat. And that really was a shock to me. So, another thing that impressed me was that yeah. the first German I saw killed in Kanban was a guy about six foot three. He was blonde, Nordic looking guy. He was a good looking man. He had a bullet right in his forehead on him. But I took one look at him and I thought I was in the wrong army. He was <laughs> so. He was so big and good looking and strong looking. Well, our guys were all somehow short and our guys little tiny <laughs> guys, the Mexican guys. <laughs> we're lucky we're five feet tall. We fit in a tank better than you would, I'll tell you that. Uh -huh. We had a hell of a tank a couple of times. The guys were really clever. What do you mean, clever in what they way? Just, they just moved around the inside of that tank like when they knew when they grew up with it. Hmm. It's really. Uh, You have to go fast to make everything work right, you know. And, uh, and these are little little guys are better than big guys, I think. Mm -hmm. so. What about the night you were on watch and you heard someone creeping up on you? Oh yeah, we they have to have a password every day in combat, you know, and a different password. Mm -hmm. You get it every morning at the morning call. And uh, I was on guard duty that night, and it was about four in the morning. Uh, waiting to be relieved. You were relieved every two, three hours. And I heard this hard breathing coming at me. Loud breathing. It was very loud. It got louder and louder and louder. And I said, what's the password? Louder and louder. It was a cow. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> get the hell out of me. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Thank you. <laughs>